We're going to continue this uh, debate and dialogue because our next guest's latest article, and we talked a lot about it on this broadcast last week, underscores a massive disconnect between consumers and the state of the U.S. economy. Uh, the article was called What's Wrong with the Economy? It's You, Not the Data. It appeared in The Wall Street Journal and was written by our friend Greg Ipp, uh, The Wall Street Journal's uh, deputy economics editor and chief economics commentator, caused quite <laughs> the debate at this table and around the country, Greg. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's talk about this disconnect because you argue in your piece that you look at the poll numbers uh, in terms of how people feel about the economy and even the trends uh, and what they think is happening and say that the data just doesn't support it. Yeah, this is what I think is really quite striking, Andrew, is that like across a variety of questions, uh, inflation, the state of the economy, your own finances, what people say seems to be significantly at odds at what we know is going on. Now, in that particular piece, I really seized on the fact that people were asked, where did inflation go in the last 12 months? And they said it got worse, even though, as you and I know, that the measured inflation rate actually got a lot lower. And the point here isn't that, oh, well, let's quibble about what people mean by inflation. It's that when people are sort of asked almost anything about the economy, they react in a very sort of visceral way that everything is lousy even though there's a fair bit of evidence that bit by bit, things are getting quite a little bit better. It's the same with their finances. We know the stock market is up a lot in the last year, right? It, uh, the average Vanguard account was at 20% in 2023. And yet by a net, a fairly large margin, more people say right. their investments got worse than better. I mean, the fact that this negativism is so pervasive in the face of evidence is fascinating. And, you know, obviously if you're Joe Biden, a little bit uh, troubling. So Greg, you know, after you wrote that piece, we talked about it here. Joe and I got into a little uh, uh, back and forth ab about it. Uh, in, and, and he made the following argument. And by the way, we got some, some viewers as well sending in emails about it. And, and they said this. If you look at the last three and a half years and the total inflationary effect during that period and uh, how inflation uh, outpaced wages in a meaningful way, that that accounts for why... Uh, these feelings persist, and that even if uh, folks say to themselves, well, inflation is coming, quote, down, uh, it's not deflationary, so prices are still going up, they're just not going up at the same pace, and if you add that in uh, relative to where their wages were, relative to where their, even their 401k accounts were, they don't feel good, and they say, stop telling me how I'm supposed to feel. Well, uh, I didn't tell anybody how to feel in that particular piece. I, what I'm trying to do here is sort of contrast what the facts tell us uh, as an economic matter versus what people feel. And I think you're absolutely right. There's a lot of folks, when they hear the word inflation, they're not thinking about the 12-month rate of change in the consumer price index. Uh, they're thinking about, like, the last few years, the overall atmosphere, the vibes, if you will. I'm paying way more for groceries. I'm paying way, way more for gasoline. Maybe my paycheck is ahead of inflation now, but for a couple of years it was not. Those are all totally legitimate points, and I think they're a big part of the story. What I think is fascinating is we're trying to get at, in some of these polling questions, how things are changing at the margin. Obviously, that's what you care about uh, in a lot of cases. And we've been asking about people, how are things getting in the last year? And like on this show and many others, you'll have economists talking about, wow, an amazing job report. Wow, a really solid inflation report. Wow, things really are really good. It's just not penetrating people's moods. And it's almost like People are primed to hear, to filter every question they hear and every time the topic of the economy comes up through this pervasive prior uh, feeling of things are just really bad. The other thing, Andrew, that's really interesting is if you contrast how people ask about the country with how they feel about themselves or their local state, you get very different answers. In our poll, for example, we asked, how is the economy doing? By a two to one ratio, they said it's doing terribly. How's your state doing? And these are seven swing states. Almost by the same ratio, they say it's doing really well. So again, a sense that even though things around them seem to be pretty okay, in fact, in some cases pretty good, they think the country is going in a bad direction. And to right. me, that speaks to a broader sense of uh, pessimism that is rooted not in what we think is going on in the hardcore economic data right now or people's 401k. But is that rooted but in, in a, misinformation in the sense then? What, is, what, do you, what leads to that? I want to bring in Steve because he's on standby listening to this conversation. So I was going to go Certainly. exactly where, uh, where Greg just went. Uh, uh, Andrew, which is this notion of 
what people are saying about their personal lives versus what they're saying about the broader economy. And, and I think one way to sort of square this uh, uh, paradox that uh, uh, Greg is bringing up is we're seeing some improvement in our data. Uh, this is a poll that came before the Wall Street Journal poll, our All America poll. We have the highest uh, in two years saying uh, uh, about their home, their home values increasing. We have the highest in three years on the outlook for the stock market. Pretty good average uh, 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 outlook for wages and the lowest in 2000. Now, all of these things are relatively low on the pessimism scale, but they're relatively high coming out of the pandemic. And maybe that squares some of the other thing we are showing in the polls, Greg, for what it's worth, is pretty good sense of job security. And then, of course, you're right. When we ask about the national uh, outlook or the national economy, things are down. But they're up from where they were. The percent who are optimistic now and for the future is up to 21 percent, low by long-term standards. And the percent that are uh, pessimistic now and for the future are, uh, is, has come down. But again, it's it re relatively low uh, by, by long-term standards. Greg, what you do you know, think? Do you remember the, uh, the famous uh, disconnect where people would be asked, "How do you, what do you think of Congress? Oh, we think it's doing a terrible job. What do you think of your congressman. Oh, I think he or she's doing a great job. And that was sort of understandable because people just hated the political system, even though they had no particular beef with the person representing them. I kind of feel like how people feel about the political system is now pervasive about how they feel about the economic system as well, that they're down on things like the border. They're down on things like, you know, COVID, I think, had a terrible effect on people's uh, overall sense of security and stability. I think they look at the election. They don't like the choices ahead of them. They hear the international scene, whether it's in the Middle East or in Ukraine and so forth. And the whole world just feels like it's going in the wrong direction. What I do th sort of thought, find interesting, though, is that if you look, look at some of the surveys, like the University of Michigan or the one that Steve just talked about, and you spoke focus your question specifically on the economic area, you'll sometimes get a more positive response than if you frame them as part of a political poll. And it almost feels like that if you frame the discussion in terms of your pure numbers, you get a different answer than if you frame it in terms of the overall national zeitgeist or the politics of the moment. Yeah, Greg? there's another, oh. there's another aspect to all this, Andrew, which is that um, the big problem is Republicans are really down on the economy and Democrats are not as up on the economy under Biden as they right. as Republicans were under Trump. So Biden has to get the Democrats and some independents with him to get those numbers on the economy up as well.